In this video, I'm going to be going through how to use the baking system within PBR Painter. So there will be a couple of videos dedicated to baking. In this one, we will cover the basics and I will explain and demonstrate how to use the baking system. And in the second video, I will cover a couple of the more advanced features that are available. I'm going to be baking this material that you can see on this Suzanne head. And by the way, if you're interested in how I made this material, I have a tutorial for that. So I will chuck a link to that in the description. But for the sake of this video, I will just be focusing on the baking itself. All right, so I'm going to jump across to the baking tab. And now I'm going to go through all of these settings and explain what everything does. So the resolution, I think, is fairly self-explanatory. It's just the resolution of the final textures that are baked. So you can choose that from this quick select menu, or you can just put that in manually. The margin is basically how far the baked image extends outwards from the edges of the UVs. So if we have a look in here at the UVs, it will bake along the edges here and it will extend outwards from the edges. In most situations, you don't have to worry about that too much and that will be sufficient. You can also choose which UV map that you want to bake to, or you can just use the active one. The option here to boost the normals, basically if you're working in Eevee and you have some kind of extreme normals, sometimes when it bakes through cycles, it can look a little bit duller than what you were working with. So you can tick that and then adjust that and boost the normal slightly, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Normally you won't need to do that. The next option is overriding existing textures, which is basically there if you bake the same thing multiple times and you don't want to keep saving multiple copies. If you tick that, it will just overwrite the files or the images in Blender. The next one is an option to save textures externally, which will save them into a directory in a specific format rather than just having them stored locally in the blend file. So I'm actually going to use that and I'm going to pick a directory just to demonstrate that. So I've set up this temporary directory just for the sake of this video. So I'm going to click accept and that's going to become my baking directory. Now I'm going to select PNG format and I'm going to leave everything else as it is for simplicity. Next, you can choose to bake the ambient occlusion as part of the baking. And finally, you can create an exportable material. What that means is basically it will create a separate material and with all of the baked textures, it will assign them to image texture nodes and then it will automatically connect up those nodes. So I'm going to use that and I'll demonstrate that process. So here you can select whether you want to create a new material for this purpose, or you can select to use one that's already in your blend file. And finally, if you tick this little shield, it will make sure that the new material that is created will be given a fake user, which basically means when you close and reopen Blender, you won't lose that material, even if it isn't assigned to your current object. Okay, so there's a bake button and a merge button, and I'll go through those in a second, but the final selection you can make here is whether you want the channel selection to be automatic. So what that does is it goes through the layers and it decides which channels need to be baked based on what's turned on. And that will usually work. However, you can select manual and then tick the ones that you wanna bake manually. Now there is an option here to use channel packing. I'm not going to discuss that in this video. I'm going to leave that for the next video as it's a more advanced feature. Basically what it does is it packs multiple different channels into one image in order to make the whole process more efficient. But as I said, I'll cover that in the following video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the automatic selection because that's going to work nicely for this. And when you're ready to bake, you can either click bake and it will just bake the textures and leave this material as it is. Otherwise you can click merge and what that will do is it will do the exact same baking process. However, it will take all of your layers and it will merge them to a single layer and then it will assign the textures inside the texture option in each channel. That is really handy if you want to consolidate a bunch of layers into a single layer. However, it will get rid of the layers and you will no longer be able to make any changes to each of the layers. With that being said, when you click that, you can back up the material during the baking. So if you do want to go back, you can do that back up and then go back to your original layers. So I'm going to demonstrate both of those different methods in this video. So first of all, I'm going to do the bake. When I click that, you'll see that there's one final option and that is to bake all the materials on the model. This is only relevant if you have multiple materials assigned to different slots in the model and you want to bake them all into the same set of textures. But when you've only got one material, it doesn't matter what you do with that. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and it's gonna start the baking. So right now it's baking the color. And now it is baking the metallic. Now it will be baking the roughness. And finally baking the normals. Okay, so as you saw, a very quick and generally painless process. Obviously the time will depend on the complexity of the model, the complexity of the material, and also on the computer specs. Okay, so you'll notice that now this field is populated by this exportable material, which is the material that it created during that baking. So what we can do is we can jump across to the shading tab, and we can actually have a look at that material inside this shader editor. So let's go through and look. So this is the exportable material. Now let's see how that looks in cycles. Okay, so that's baked the material and it looks pretty good, I think. So I think it looks basically like it did in the original material. Some loss of detail, obviously due to the resolution of the baked textures, but generally captures the material as it was before. And as you'll see in the shader editor, all of the textures are now assigned into these nodes. So this is now ready to go in the simplest possible format, which is ideal for exporting into other programs. And I will cover that exporting process in a different video. Okay, so if we jump back into the PBR Painter tab, now we can go back to the original material. And as you can see, generally looks the same. The normals are slightly weaker, which is partly due to the fact that the baking will tend to make it slightly less obvious, but also due to that resolution. Okay, so the final thing I'm going to demonstrate in this video is the exact same thing, except I'm going to use Merge. And I'm going to tick Overwrite Existing Textures so I don't make extra textures. And this is basically going to take the individual layers and create a single merged layer, as we'll see. So I'm going to click that button, and I'll back up the material so I have it as a backup. And this is the same option as previously, so if you have multiple materials, you can tick that and it will merge them all together. But we don't need to worry about that in this case, so I'm going to click OK. OK, so the baking's finished, and if I go back into the layers, what you'll see is it's now done that baking and it's put all the textures into a single layer. And the result looks like it did before with the baking. So as I said, this is very useful if you want to consolidate multiple different layers into a single layer because it's generally much more computationally efficient to have a single layer of textures rather than many different layers with procedurals and various other things going on. So definitely a good option if things are starting to run a little bit slow because you've got too many layers that are kind of making it a little bit too complex. All right, I'm gonna leave the video there because I've covered all the basics of baking. As I've demonstrated, the process is very easy and very straightforward, at least in terms of the basics. And it's very simple to get your material and bake it and have it saved in a couple of minutes or less as a set of textures. In the next video, I'm going to cover some of the more advanced baking, and that's going to be focused mainly on this channel packing. So I'm going to explain exactly what that is and how to use it, and I'll demonstrate that as well in that video. And I'll use the exact same material, and I'll show you that you can get the exact same result with this channel packing in a much more efficient way. Other than that, thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful and I hope you got something from it. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Cheers.